Welcome, Digital Pathology Trailblazers. I hope that you enjoyed chapter one of the book. This is going to be chapter two. In chapter two, we're going to be talking about the challenges and benefits of digital pathology. Yes, there are challenges. We all know about this, but there are also tremendous benefits. So enjoy the audio version of this chapter. And if you know anybody who would benefit, who is now learning digital pathology, starting their journey, and would benefit from this book, just share this podcast episode with them. And in the show notes, there's going to be a link to download the PDF version of the book as well. So let's dive into it. Learn about the newest digital pathology trends in science and industry, meet the most interesting people in the niche, and gain insights relevant to your own projects. Here is where pathology meets computer science. You are listening to the Digital Pathology Podcast with your host, Dr. Alexandra Zhurov. Chapter 2. Challenges and Benefits of Digital Pathology 1. Introduction As much as I love digital pathology, there are two sides of the coin, the fantastic one and the less fantastic one. This chapter delves into the two sides of the digital pathology coin, the advantages and the obstacles. As we navigate this new territory, we acknowledge the considerable benefits digital pathology confers. It heightens accuracy and efficiency in diagnostics, fosters more seamless collaboration among professionals, and bolsters research capacities. Not to mention, it integrates smoothly with other facets of digital healthcare and paves the way for new educational opportunities. However, this new frontier is not without its challenges. Technological considerations such as maintaining image quality and addressing data storage needs stand at the forefront. Beyond that, we grapple with issues of regulatory compliance, institutional acceptance, cost efficiency, and the need for specialized training. In this chapter, we'll examine real-world examples showcasing how these benefits have been leveraged and these hurdles tackled. These case studies will provide a clear understanding of the terrain we are traversing, and the potential of digital pathology. Finally, we look ahead at the future of digital pathology, emerging tech advancements, potential shifts in the regulatory environment, and expanding opportunities. By the end of this chapter, you'll have a comprehensive understanding of digital pathology's capabilities and challenges, providing a compass for navigating this evolving landscape. 2. Benefits of Digital Pathology A. Improved accuracy and efficiency in diagnostics and research. Digital pathology holds substantial promise for enhancing both the accuracy and efficiency of diagnostics. Traditionally, pathologists examine physical slides under a microscope, a process that, while time-tested, is subject to human error and variability. 1. Streamlined workflow. Digital pathology allows for a more efficient workflow as compared to traditional glass slide evaluation. The digitization of slides eliminates the physical handling of slides, which can be time-consuming and prone to errors. It enables pathologists to access the slides directly from their workstation, reducing the time taken to retrieve and prepare them. 2. Manipulation of images. Digital images can be manipulated in ways that physical slides cannot. For example, they can be zoomed in and out continuously without being limited to the magnification of a particular objective lens. To examine specific areas of interest in greater detail or different filters and color adjustments can be applied to highlight specific features of the tissue. 3. Annotating capability. Digital images can be annotated directly, facilitating communication and consultation among pathologists. This can help improve diagnostic consensus and reduce interpretive errors. 4. Ease of consultation and second opinions. Digital pathology allows pathologists to easily share high-quality images with colleagues across the world for consultations and second opinions. This eliminates the need for physical transporting slides and the associated risk of damage or loss. It expedites the process and enhances the possibilities for collaborative diagnosis especially in complex or rare cases. 5. Applications of AI and machine learning. The digitization of slides opens up opportunities to apply artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms. These tools can assist in detecting patterns or abnormalities 
that may be overlooked by human observers, potentially leading to more accurate diagnosis. B. Enhance collaborative opportunities. Digital pathology substantially expands collaborative possibilities, not just within the realm of traditional pathology, but also within the broader field of drug development. By enabling instant global sharing of digital images, professionals can easily collaborate beyond geographical and institutional boundaries. In the context of drug development, digital pathology allows for real-time collaboration between pathologists, biopharmaceutical teams, and clinical trial teams. This integration can provide valuable insights into the effects of potential drugs at the microscopic level, offering essential information about the efficacy and safety of new therapeutics. For complex or rare conditions where diverse expert input is vital, this kind of collaboration can lead to more nuanced understanding and, consequently, to the development of more effective treatment strategies. Moreover, Multidisciplinary teams that include pathologists, oncologists, radiologists, and other specialties can analyze and discuss cases simultaneously, bringing a more holistic and integrated approach to drug discovery and development. C. Advanced Research Capabilities Digital pathology offers significant enhancements to research capabilities, enabling a level of analysis and data manipulation that was previously unattainable. For instance, quantitative image analysis empowered by machine learning and AI can extract detailed and precise information from tissue samples, providing insights into cellular structures, biomarker expression, and morphological patterns. Such capabilities facilitate deeper understanding of diseases, aiding in the identification of novel biomarkers and contributing to the development of personalized therapies. Furthermore, the capacity to store and share digital images facilitates large-scale studies and meta-analysis, allowing researchers to leverage vast amounts of data collected across different studies, institutions, and geographical locations. In essence, digital pathology opens up a new frontier in biomedical research, offering promising avenues for exploration and discovery. D. Integration of other digital healthcare systems. Digital's pathology capacity to integrate seamlessly with other digital healthcare systems adds another layer of advantage to its application. In the era of interconnected digital health, the ability to link digital pathology systems with laboratory information systems, LIS, electronic health records, EHRs, and picture archiving and communication systems, PACs, leads to a more holistic, efficient, and patient-centered healthcare delivery. Integration facilitates not only the consolidation of patient data, but also its analysis across different platforms, thereby painting a more comprehensive picture of a patient's health status. For instance, correlating histopathological findings with radiological or genomic data could enhance diagnostic accuracy, prognostic assessment, and treatment planning. Additionally, Integration improves workflow efficiency by eliminating redundant data entry and reducing the likelihood of errors, which in turn contributes to better patient care. In a broader perspective, this interconnectivity fosters a robust data-driven approach instrumental for advancing precision medicine and population health management. E. Educational and training opportunities. This tremendous advantage of education and training opportunities is especially dear and important to me. Looking back, I remember starting my journey in veterinary pathology. Even if I wanted to, I couldn't start it in Poland. There was no accredited residency centers in my country. I don't think there are any at the time of writing of this book either. So I had to move abroad for better education, which fortunately was possible for me, but there were many more equally or better qualified people who wanted to pursue this specialty and were not that fortunate. During my residency in Germany, I began to explore digital pathology. This technology offered a chance to make quality education accessible without the need to leave home. With digital pathology, you could learn where you want to live, and that was an exciting prospect. The German students had access to a histopathology portal that they could access for self-study at home. I fully leveraged this technology when I was preparing for my board exam. And together with a few friends, we formed an international study group with members from Belgium and the UK. 
we were using digital slides to prepare for our exam. Initially, we were uncertain about this approach given the traditional use of glass slides during the examination itself, but we stuck with it because it allowed us to study together. When we all passed the exam, I realized the power of digital pathology. It was more than just tool. It connected people to opportunities, removed geographical barriers, and made education accessible. It was then that I decided to dedicate myself to advancing digital pathology. The digitization of pathology provides enriching opportunities for education and training that extend beyond traditional means. Digital pathology allows for the creation of extensive, easily accessible digital slide libraries. These resources can be invaluable for teaching histopathology to students and residents, allowing them to view and review a diverse range of pathological cases at their own pace. Furthermore, these digital libraries can offer unique and rare case samples that might not be available in every teaching institution. Moreover, digital pathology facilitates interactive learning experiences, such as annotated slides for specific learning points or virtual case studies augmenting the educational value. As students transition into professional roles, digital pathology remains a key tool for ongoing professional development. It enables pathologists to participate in online forums for case discussions, enhancing collaborative learning and exchange of expertise. The Digital Pathology Association, DPA, in collaboration with the creator of Path Presenter, Dr. Raj Singh, spearheaded an innovative educational initiative called Digital Anatomical Pathology Academy, DAPA. DAPA, deeply committed to enhancing the educational landscape of pathology, has implemented several strategies that leverage digital pathology. One such endeavor is the arrangement of lectures by globally renowned pathologists using whole slide images, thereby offering a unique opportunity to learn from the best minds in the field. In addition, DAPA annually recruits a few pathology fellows to help post case of the month, further enriching the educational content available to pathology professionals worldwide. To expand its reach, it has also linked with the Chinese American Pathology Association, CAPA. As a result of this alliance, members of either organization can access weekly Zoom teachings from CAPA, considerably broadening their learning opportunities. These resources are immensely beneficial, particularly for pathologists outside the U.S. who may lack access to whole site images or higher caliber systematic teaching in pathology. The ultimate goal of these educational initiatives is to enable pathologists to enhance their knowledge and skills, thereby improving their ability to help patients. Opportunities for digital pathology education are not only available, but are abundant and enriching. Once aware of them, pathologists can readily tap into these resources to advance their learning and professional development. You can access DAPA here, www dot digital pathology association dot org forward slash digital dash anatomic dash pathology dash academy. In the sphere of veterinary pathology, the Joint Pathology Center, JPC, provides an invaluable digital resource for professionals seeking to refine their diagnostic abilities. The JPC underpins its commitment to advancing veterinary pathology through its dedicated Department of Defense Veterinary Pathology Residency Program, DOD VPRP. This program specifically equips Army veterinarians with the skills and knowledge necessary for specializing in anatomic veterinary pathology. The ultimate goals of this program are twofold, ensuring veterinarians successfully attain specialty board certification and preparing them to contribute to or lead military medical research endeavors. The DOD VPRP utilizes two vital educational tools as part of their training curriculum, and those who already sat veterinary pathology boards know about them very well. The WSC is a weekly event that presents new cases digitally, creating an engaging and progressive learning environment. On the other hand, VSP is an annotated digital slide collection that encapsulates classic entities in veterinary pathology, each with detailed descriptions serving as a comprehensive guide for pathology residents. The DOD VPRP's mission is primarily to provide military veterinary pathologists with comprehensive online training materials necessary for the completion of the residency program. These resources include case studies, 
curriculum information, consultation results, digital images of glass specimen slide, among other text or graphical data. Beyond this primary mission, the DOD VPRP also seeks to deliver continuing education services or resources to both military and civilian veterinary pathologists. This is accomplished via online presentations of selected case studies throughout the academic year, reinforcing the DOD VPRP's commitment to continuous learning and professional growth in the field of veterinary pathology. Significantly, these freely available digital assets are not merely educational tools. They also serve as preparatory materials for veterinary pathology residents. The intricate and broad scope of these digital collections is perfectly suited for those preparing for board certifications, with professional certifying bodies such as the European College of Veterinary Pathologists and American College of Veterinary Pathologists. These resources underscore the essential role of digital pathology in facilitating advanced education, training, and preparation for professional accreditation in veterinary pathology. You can access these resources here, www.askjpc.org. Continuing education webinars or online courses can utilize digital slides, allowing pathologists to keep up with new developments without the need for physical attendance. This is particularly advantageous for pathologists located in remote and under-resourced areas, breaking down geographical barriers to access high-quality education and training. Finally, the integration of digital pathology with AI provides additional training prospects. With AI's growing role in pathology, learning how to work alongside these technologies is becoming an essential skill. AI algorithms can be used to train pathologists on pattern recognition, and in turn, pathologists can contribute to the training and refinement of these algorithms, creating a symbiotic learning environment. Overall, digital pathology significantly broadens the scope and accessibility of education and training in the field. Three, challenges in digital pathology. Digital pathology, despite its many benefits, also faces several technological challenges. Indeed, the challenges faced by digital pathology are multifaceted, each requiring a unique set of solutions. Technological issues pose questions about image quality, standardization, data storage, and management. Regulatory and compliance issues need to be navigated with digital pathology needing to adapt to existing regulations and create a framework for new ones. Acceptance and cultural change within the pathology community is also crucial as the technology requires a significant shift in traditional pathology practices. Cost and return on investments are of great concern, as the implementation of digital pathology systems requires substantial investment, necessitating a careful evaluation of the financial benefits. Lastly, training and expertise are needed to ensure the correct usage of interpretation of digital images, requiring the development of specific training programs and resources. Each of these challenges, while significant, also provides avenues for growth and improvement within the field. A. Technological issues. 1. Image quality and standardization. Attaining optimal image quality in digital pathology is foundational to its successful implementation and acceptance. The clarity, detail, and accurate color representation of high-resolution digital images are pivotal in mirroring the original glass slides. Issues such as variable color outputs resulting from differing scanner settings, artifacts introduced during scanning, or challenges like the lack of focus can compromise image quality and potentially impact diagnostic accuracy. The lack of focus specifically presents a unique challenge in digital pathology. With traditional microscopy, pathologists can adjust the focus manually, examining different layers of the tissue. However, with digital scans, the focus is set during the scanning process, often leading to some areas being out of focus. This could potentially obscure essential diagnostic information. Standardization poses another substantial challenge. Consistency in image quality across different scanners, diverse laboratory protocols, and variable staining methods is essential. Ideally, identical tissue samples scanned on different devices should yield identical digital images. However, due to variability in scanner technologies, image processing algorithms, and staining techniques, achieving this uniformity can be challenging. The lack of standardization can lead to inconsistent or even misleading results 
which could potentially affect patient care. Addressing these challenges necessitates significant advancements in the technical refinement of imaging hardware, development of robust image processing algorithms, and establishment of precise protocols for slide preparation and scanning. Additionally, the development and adoption of international standards for digital pathology image quality and scanner performance are crucial across the field. Side note, I hope that when I release the next version of this book, this is all going to be reality across the globe. Just very quickly, I know that digital pathology is going to be the way people are doing pathology. So basically every pathologist and every lab professional needs to know that. And if you know somebody who is, I don't know, maybe a little intimidated by this topic, this transformation so much, this is a perfect candidate to get this book as a gift from you. So if you could share it, I would very, very much appreciate it. And now let's back to the episode. Two, data storage and management. The move to digital pathology involves dealing with immense volumes of data, which pose considerable challenges in terms of storage and management. A single digital slide can generate gigabytes of data depending on the resolution and bit depth. Multiply this by the number of slides that a busy laboratory produces daily, and the data storage needs quickly become substantial. In the short term, laboratories need to invest in sufficient storage capacity to handle this volume of data. However, with storage comes the task of data management, efficient organization, retrieval, backup, and deletion of images to ensure a smooth workflow. The sheer volume of data generated can easily overwhelm poorly designed data management system causing delays and inefficiencies that may impact patients' care. The long-term storage of digital images poses additional challenges, especially in regions where regulatory requirements mandate the retention of images for extended periods. The cost associated with such long-term storage can be significant. And organizations need to balance these costs with the benefits digital pathology brings. Data security and privacy are other important considerations. Digital pathology images in human medicine are patient data and must be stored and transmitted securely to maintain patient confidentiality and meet regulatory standards. Ensuring the security of data while keeping it accessible to authorized personnel is a complex task that requires robust, sophisticated IT systems. Overall, the challenges of data storage and management in digital pathology are significant and demand a combination of hardware, software, and procedural solutions. Strategies may include implementing data compression techniques, leveraging cloud-based storage, using sophisticated data management software, and ensuring IT staff have the training and expertise to manage the systems effectively. B. Regulatory and compliance issues. Regulatory and compliance issues are paramount in the realms of both human medicine and drug development. For human medicine, digital pathology must comply with a wide range of regulations related to data privacy, security, and interoperability. Notably, this includes the General Data Protection Regulation, GDPR, in the EU, which emphasizes the rights of patients to control their personal data. In the USA, regulations like the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, HIPAA, dictate how health information is stored, transferred, and accessed. Similarly, in drug development, regulations govern preclinical and clinical trials, drug manufacturing, quality control, and post-market surveillance. These involve agencies such as the Food and Drug Administration, FDA, in the USA, and the European Medicine Agency, EMA, in Europe. The incorporation of digital pathology into these areas needs to be done thoughtfully, taking into account validation and verification processes standards of analytical performance, and data reproducibility. In both spheres, failure to adhere to regulatory standards can lead to severe penalties, project delays, and could potentially harm patients. In drug development, good laboratory practice, GLP regulations, also play a critical role. These regulations provide a framework for study conduct, organization, and management ensuring the consistency, reliability, and integrity of non-clinical safety data. In the context of digital pathology, these guidelines influence how image acquisition, analysis, storage, and data management should be undertaken. For example, all the steps in the digital pathology workflow, including slide scanning and image analysis, must be performed consistently 
and reliably to meet GLP standards. Moreover, digital pathology data must be stored securely and be readily retrievable for inspection or audit, ensuring traceability and accountability. Therefore, incorporating digital pathology into drug development not only necessitates adherence to specific medical and drug regulations, but also requires strict compliance with GLP to ensure the quality and integrity of the generated data. C. Acceptance and cultural change in the pathology community. Acceptance and cultural change within the pathology community represents significant challenges in the adoption of digital pathology. Traditional pathology, entrenched in the use of microscopes and glass slides, has been the norm for generations of pathologists. Switching to a digital system signifies a major shift in practice and requires a certain degree of openness to change. Not all pathologists are readily accepting of this transformation, as it may pose potential threats to their comfort zone, professional identity, or perceived competency. Moreover, the skepticism about the quality and reliability of digital images compared to traditional glass slides can also contribute to resistance. However, the promise of increased efficiency, enhanced collaboration, and advanced analytical capabilities offered by digital pathology is gradually fostering a cultural shift. Continuous education, adequate training, and supportive change management strategies are key to facilitating acceptance of digital pathology within the community, reshaping old habits, and ensuring a successful transition to the new era of digitized diagnostics. D, cost and return on investment. The financial aspect, specifically the cost and return on investment, ROI, stands as a crucial determinant in the decision to implement digital pathology. The initial investment in digital pathology systems can be substantial, involving the cost of the hardware, software, and infrastructure, as well as potential modification to existing laboratory layouts. This might be a deterrent for many institutions, especially those operating on tight budgets. However, the potential ROI could offset these upfront costs over time. Digital pathology can increase efficiency, reduce errors, and enable quick access to previous cases and reference materials, which in turn can lead to faster diagnosis and higher throughput. There is also the potential to increase revenue through offering telepathology services and enhanced research capabilities. Moreover, cost savings could be realized from decreased physical transportation of samples. A thorough cost-benefit analysis, considering both immediate and long-term impacts, should be conducted before the implementation of digital pathology. Institutions should also keep an eye on the continual development and decreasing costs of digital technologies, which may make digital pathology even more economically feasible in the future. E. Training and expertise. Another significant challenge lies in the need for training and expertise to use digital pathology systems effectively. As with any new technology, there is a learning curve associated with digital pathology. Even though pathologists, lab technicians, and other healthcare professionals do not need to be taught how to interpret digital images, the interpretation is the same as the interpretation on the images seen under the microscope, they must be trained in how to operate the systems, understand and use the software, and navigate the associated databases. Training needs may vary depending on the specific software and hardware being used, as well as the unique workflows of each laboratory or institution. Some individuals may find the transition to digital pathology challenging, particularly those who are less familiar or comfortable with digital technologies. This could slow down the process of implementation and uptake. Furthermore, institutions need to ensure they have the necessary expertise to handle the maintenance and troubleshooting of digital pathology systems. And this cannot be stressed enough, as there will be a lot of troubleshooting during the initial implementation period. This could involve hiring new staff with specialized knowledge or investing in additional training for existing staff. Investing in training and building expertise is crucial for successful implementation of digital pathology. This is an area where partnership with technology providers could be beneficial, as they often offer training and support services. In addition, Online resources and forums can be helpful for troubleshooting and staying updated on the latest developments and best practices in the field of digital pathology. One such online resource is my membership website called the Digital Pathology Cloud, where members have access to a repository of regularly updated courses on various digital pathology topics, 
as well as new resources every month. To learn more, visit www.digitalpathology.club. 4. Case Studies Overcoming Challenges and Realizing Benefits A. Case Study 1 Implementation of Digital Pathology in a Large Hospital Our first case study revolves around a large hospital at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center in the U.S. that has been at the forefront of adopting digital pathology for routine pathology work, specifically for second opinion intraoperative consultations for over a decade. The hospital embarked on a challenging yet rewarding journey of converting its primary pathology diagnosis to a digital platform. The hospital started its digital transformation with an incremental rollout, starting with biopsy specimens, which generally contained smaller amounts of tissue. Over time, they managed to scan over 40,000 slides via their digital pathology system, encountering various challenges and opportunities along the way. The successful shift to digital pathology necessitated adjustments before imaging, the integration of specific software, and thorough post-imaging evaluations. This transformation has led to improved patient care and enabled the hospital to centralize services, introduce economies of scale, and enhance subspecialty coverage. However, some areas such as cytology, hematopathology, and educational cases were excluded from their initial digital pathology implementation due to the limitations of whole slide imaging scanner hardware. Another crucial aspect of their journey was integrating the digital pathology system with their laboratory information system. This integration was pivotal for efficiency and functionality. Accommodating this new technology required facility renovations, adjustments to pre-imaging factors for better scanning, and dedicated resources for training the hospital's pathologists. Through effective communication and involvement of community pathologists, the hospital managed to successfully implement the system. Their journey was made smoother due to the concomitant top-down buy-in from leaders and bottom-up empowering users approach. Despite the high cost and significant change to existing workflows, the hospital was committed to validating their use case according to the College of American Pathologists' recommendations. Their journey demonstrates that with an adaptable plan, dedicated resources, and effective leadership, a full implementation of a digital pathology workflow can be successfully realized. To learn more about this case, read Enterprise Implementation of Digital Pathology. Feasibility, Challenges, and Opportunities by Hartman et al. B. Case Study 2. Use of Digital Pathology in a GLP-compliant research setting. In a contrasting setting, let's examine the case of Charles River Laboratories, a contract research organization, CRO, and AstraZeneca, a pharmaceutical company working together on drug development. When COVID-19 pandemic happened, One of their primary challenges was to conduct in-person pathology peer reviews of non-clinical animal studies. A peer review is often an integral part of a study conduct where an external pathologist, usually appointed by the client who is placing the study at the CRO, is reviewing the work of the CRO pathologists. Traditionally, this process was associated with travel. The client pathologist would travel to the CRO for a few days and review the slides and the study data with the CRO study pathologist at the multi-headed microscope. The process began with the CRO validating the slide scanner, scanner software, and associated database software, ensuring that it all worked harmoniously within a GLP-compliant environment. They also validated a cloud-based digital pathology platform, which facilitated the upload, transfer, and storage of whole slide images and associated metadata. As a crucial part of this journey, the sponsor also carried out separate GLP validation of the cloud-based platform to cover the download and review process of the whole slide images, thereby ensuring the complete process adherence to GLP standards. Through these steps, the CRO successfully deployed a digital workflow for the primary evaluation and peer review of a large GLP toxicologic study. This digital adaptation brought about flexibility in global collaborations and open possibilities for future use of digitized data for advanced image analysis through artificial intelligence and machine learning. During the pandemic, traveling was no longer an option. The introduction of digital pathology provided a solution. To learn more about this case, read Utilizing Whole Slide Images for the Primary Evaluation and Peer Review of a GLP-Compliant Rodent Toxicology Study by Jacobson et al. 5. Looking Forward – The Future of Digital Pathology 
A. Ongoing technological advancements. Looking ahead, digital pathology is poised to undergo continual technological advancements that promise to revolutionize the field. One such advancement is the integration of artificial intelligence and machine learning into digital pathology platforms. These technologies have already begun to streamline the work of pathologists by automating repetitive tasks, enhancing diagnostic accuracy, and assisting in the detection of intricate patterns that may not be easily recognized by the human eye. A crucial development on the horizon involves improvements in the speed and efficiency of whole slide imaging scanning technologies and or development of alternative imaging techniques that do not require tissue processing or staining. These advancements will expedite the imaging processes, thereby accelerating the transition towards a more digital pathology-friendly environment. Cloud-based technologies are also set to play a pivotal role in addressing current challenges related to storage and data management. They will provide scalable and secure solutions that can accommodate the vast amount of data generated in digital pathology. Further progress in the field of telepathology will also enable real-time consultations and collaborations among pathologists across the globe, enhancing the efficiency and quality of patient care. One significant area for future technological advancements in digital pathology is the standardization and interoperability of various systems. This will facilitate seamless data integration and sharing across different platforms, driving the development of a more collaborative and effective digital pathology ecosystem. B. Evolving regulatory environment. As digital pathology continues to mature, the regulatory landscape is concurrently evolving to match its pace. The regulatory authorities have a crucial role in ensuring the safety, effectiveness, and quality of digital pathology systems. Currently, there is a wide variation in regulatory approaches worldwide, leading to disparities in how digital pathology is adopted and integrated into healthcare systems. In the United States, the FDA is responsible for the regulation of digital pathology systems as medical devices. The FDA has started recognizing the benefits and potential of digital pathology, resulting in the approval of several whole slide imaging systems for primary diagnostic use. Meanwhile, in Europe, the European Medicines Agency and other national regulatory bodies oversee the regulations of digital pathology systems under the new EU Medical Device Regulation, MDR. The new framework places great emphasis on post-market surveillance and traceability, requiring manufacturers to continuously monitor the safety and performance of their products. However, despite the progress, there are still regulatory challenges that need to be addressed. For instance, there are no standardized guidelines for validating artificial intelligence algorithms used in digital pathology. Such guidelines are crucial to ensuring that AI-based tools are reliable and clinically valid. There are also uncertainties about data privacy and security regulations. The increasing use of cloud-based solutions for storing and sharing digital pathology data raises concern about patient confidentiality and data protection. Regulations such as HIPAA in the US and the GDPR in Europe are in place to protect patient information. Still, their application to digital pathology needs further clarification. Looking forward, the evolving regulatory environment should focus on providing a clear and predictable pathway for the adoption and integration of digital pathology while ensuring patient safety and data integrity. As new technologies such as AI and cloud computing become more prevalent in digital pathology, regulations need to adapt quickly and ensure their safe and effective use. C. Expanding applications and opportunities. While the proof of concept and use cases for digital pathology are well established, its adoption has been somewhat uneven. However, the landscape is rapidly changing with increasing recognition of digital pathology's potential. Through telepathology, remote areas with limited resources can have expedited diagnosis and second opinions. Within the pharmaceutical industry, digital pathology accelerates drug development processes and boost the precision and efficiency of pathological assessments, courtesy of AI integration. Digital pathology also revolutionizes pathology education, enabling virtual collaborative learning and opening access to diverse case collections. Lastly, diagnostics are being improved by AI-powered image analysis tools. In essence, digital pathology is broadening its applications and opportunities, progressively reshaping patient care 
research, education, and drug development, making the beginnings of a new era in pathology. 6. Conclusion A. Recap of key points. In the preceding sections, we discussed the numerous benefits and challenges in the adoption of digital pathology. Key benefits highlighted were improved accessibility to pathology education, enhanced diagnostic speed and accuracy through AI integration, the opportunity for telepathology to democratize healthcare, streamlining of drug development processes, and the challenges discussed included the initial cost of adoption, the necessity for regulatory compliance, the need for significant cultural change within the pathology community, the importance of ongoing training and expertise development. These points were substantiated by real-world case studies, one about the successful implementation of digital pathology in a large hospital, and the other highlighted the practical application of digital pathology in a research setting following GLP regulations. In terms of future perspectives, we touched on ongoing technological advancements, evolving regulatory environments, an area of expanding applications and opportunities. B. Summary. Despite the numerous challenges that come with transitioning to digital pathology, the potential benefits far outweigh these obstacles. These benefits extend not only to pathologists and researchers, but also to patients who stand to gain from more accurate and faster diagnosis. For the full potential of digital pathology to be realized, stakeholders must work together to overcome the obstacles presented, be they regulatory, cultural, or financial. The rapid pace of technological advancement and evolving regulatory environments will continue to shape the landscape of digital pathology. As the field continues to grow and develop, we can expect the expansion of its applications and opportunities. With a comprehensive understanding of both the challenges and benefits, we can look forward to a future where digital pathology is a standard enhancing and revolutionizing the world pathology. As such, it's imperative for pathologists, researchers, and other stakeholders to stay informed and engaged with the developments in digital pathology, ensuring its effective and ethical integration into our healthcare systems. Thank you so much for staying till the end. This was chapter two. Now we know what challenges we need to face, but also which benefits come with digital pathology. In the show notes below is the link to the PDF. So if you wanna have the text version as you are listening to this, go grab it. You're gonna find all the images there. And please, please, please share it with somebody who might be interested, who might benefit, who is learning about digital pathology right now. And I talk to you in the next episode.